Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we're going to be covering topic 5.15, which is sustainable agriculture. We'll be talking about a bunch of different sustainable agricultural methods. We'll talk about how they work, and most importantly, we'll talk about the environmental consequences that they solve. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe different sustainable agricultural techniques, and they'll kind of break down into three different categories. Those will be techniques aimed at preventing soil erosion, techniques that are aimed at improving soil nutrient levels, and then finally, a technique called rotational grazing. Our skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video will be proposing a solution to an environmental problem. So the first group of solutions we'll be looking at are all aimed at soil conservation. So first of all, soil conservation is just agricultural techniques that are aimed at minimizing erosion. This is really important because in the United States, topsoil erodes 10 times faster than it forms. So it takes a long time for rocks to break down for weathering to occur, but it does not take a long time for the wind and the rain and poor agricultural practices to erode topsoil. So it's really critical that we're thinking about how to conserve it. So why is this important? Well, it's gonna prevent the loss of the nutrients that are in the topsoil. It's gonna prevent the loss of moisture that's in the soil that plants need in order to grow. It's gonna keep those decomposers in the topsoil that are really important there. And remember, organic matter is really important for retaining nutrients and moisture in the soil. So contour plowing is a method of soil conservation that involves plowing your agricultural lines parallel to your slopes instead of down your slopes. That's gonna form kind of mini terraces that will catch water running down the slopes, carrying that precious topsoil. This is a picture of it so we can kind of understand that it makes these nice terraces. And again, these just act kind of like little guards to catch soil that's running off. Terracing is this idea of cutting flat platforms into a steep hillside. And these flat platforms will also catch water that could be carrying your topsoil off of your slopes during heavy rainfall. It's gonna conserve water, it's going to conserve topsoil as well. So this is a really beneficial practice that can allow you to do agriculture in areas that are very steep and otherwise might become eroded too quickly to use. And finally, we have perennial crops. Perennial crops are crops that live year round. So they're not necessarily harvested at the end of the year and the whole plant isn't taken out of the ground. We're gonna leave the plant in place. It's going to have some root structure underneath the ground and that's gonna help preserve the topsoil by keeping it anchored in place. So you don't have to rip the whole plant out of the ground at the end of the harvest. A lot of that plant stays there and it's just gonna come back the next year. So we can see in the diagram here, when you have a more complex root structure, when you have larger plants that come back year after year, they're gonna help retain a lot of the soil moisture and they're gonna help capture a lot of that runoff and prevent it from carrying your topsoil down the slope and away from your agricultural fields. Windbreaks are just trees or other plants that are planted around the agricultural fields in order to stop the force of the wind and prevent it from carrying so much of the topsoil away from the agricultural fields. A really beneficial component here is that they can also be used to generate firewood. You could plant fruit trees so that you're generating some income through fruit sales as well, a valuable habitat for pollinator species. So we can see an example here of just having this large kind of buffer strip along your crops so that the wind's force is reduced a little bit. And this diagram can help us visualize how the wind will kind of be forced up and over the crops rather than passing straight over them and carrying away a lot of that topsoil. No-till is a method that is pretty straightforward. It just involves not tilling or mixing your agricultural fields at the end of the season. This is really beneficial because you can leave crop residue on your actual fields. And that crop residue is going to one, add organic matter to the soil, but two, it acts like a kind of moisturizing layer, trapping moisture in the soil, and also it kind of anchors and holds the soil in place so that the wind is not able to blow it away as easily. This is gonna prevent loose soil from being eroded, which is a big problem when you're using a tiller, which mixes up the soil and loosens it. So we can see in this diagram here, the soil that's not tilled is gonna have this thick organic layer on it. That's gonna hold in water, it's gonna reduce runoff. But on the right, when we're tilling over and over again, that soil is gonna become really dry. Remember dry soil erodes more easily. And so tilling can over time lead to soil erosion. And then finally we have strip cropping, which is kind of another name for intercropping. This is gonna involve planting crops of different densities in alternating rows. So some crops like wheat are very dense, other crops like corn are not very dense. And so when you plant a really dense crop in between your less dense crops, what you're gonna do is catch some of the soil and water that might erode from those less tightly packed rows of corn. And this is gonna help limit topsoil erosion and conserve water. The next methods that we look at here are all aimed at improving soil fertility, which is the level of key nutrients that are needed for plant growth. 
So replanting the same crops over and over again depletes the soil of the same nutrients over and over again. However, if you rotate your crops, what you give is the soil some time to recover. So some crops are really nitrogen demanding like corn. And what you can do is actually intersperse your corn seasons with legumes. So these are plants like peas and beans, and they have beneficial nitrogen fixing bacteria in their roots that actually take atmospheric nitrogen, fix it and return it to the soil. So after you've done some corn intensive seasons, that's gonna deplete the nitrogen from your soil. You can plant legumes in between that to return nitrogen to the soil. And if you alternate using that pattern, over time you should maintain fairly stable nitrogen levels instead of depleting them and having to constantly use synthetic fertilizers to bring them back up. Green manure is another method that can be used to improve fertility, but it can also limit erosion. So oftentimes after a crop is harvested, the fields are just left bare for the season. But if you plant what's called a cover crop, this is just a quick growing crop that grows in that off season or in between the harvest and replanting of your main crop. It's beneficial because its roots will stabilize the soil, limiting erosion. But once that cover crop is ready to be cleared, you can cut it down and leave the remains on the field and it will act as what we call a green manure. One, it's gonna break down over time and add nutrients back into the soil, but two, it's gonna act like a moisturizing layer and prevent evaporation loss. So we can see a diagram here. There's a picture of that green manure being cut down and left on the field. And then this diagram helps us visualize that during the winter when normally there's no crops, we can have certain crops like oats or clover, and then they can be clipped down. Their biomass is just left on the soil. It limits erosion. And then slowly over time, those nutrients will be released into the soil and we're gonna get better yields the following year when we plant our main crop because all of those nutrients are being returned to the soil. And finally, we have the addition of crushed limestone. So limestone releases calcium carbonate when it's placed into a soil. And this is good because that's a base and that will neutralize soil. So remember that when soil becomes too acidic, it has a really high H plus ion concentration and H plus ions actually leach nutrients out of the soil by displacing positively charged ions. So they push them out of the soil and then the water leaches them away. That's a problem. So we can see here in this graph, as we become more acidic, as we're moving down in pH, all of those key nutrients are becoming less available. Limestone acts as a base though, which neutralizes your soil and moves it closer to seven. We can see that as we move up in pH or closer to seven, becoming more neutral, that's gonna increase the level of nutrients that are retained in the soil. Another problem is that acidic soil makes toxic metals more soluble. So when your pH starts to drop, what you're gonna see is a huge increase in the solubility of aluminum. Aluminum is a metal that's toxic to many plants. It can damage their roots and kill them if it reaches high enough concentrations. So adding limestone will also neutralize your pH and prevent aluminum from becoming soluble in your soil, which can kill your crops. And then finally, the calcium that's released with calcium carbonate is a needed plant nutrient as well. And so this can just further contribute to the fertility of soil. And finally, we have rotational grazing. So rotational grazing just involves moving animals that graze on grass through different pastures periodically so that they don't overgraze. Remember that overgrazing clips grass down too low to survive. So the grass over time will die. It also compacts the soil. So it's gonna lead to erosion but rotation actually promotes more growth than if the pasture were just left to its own growth. Now this is because the plants are gonna be clipped back to this sort of medium height where they're growing the fastest. So if animals are continually grazing, they keep the grass in its optimal growth stage. So remember that if grass is clipped too low, the roots can't grow and it's gonna die. But if it's let to grow too long, it's gonna actually die and go to seed and we're gonna have decreased growth and it's gonna slow down. But if the animals are continually clipping the grass back to this optimal level of growth, we're actually gonna see longer root structure over time as well. That's because the plant is continually in its rapid growth phase. And so it's gonna be able to store more energy in its roots and its roots will become longer and healthier over time. So it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but if we're using rotational grazing and making sure that grass is never clipped down too low, and also that it's not allowed to just grow super long, that's gonna actually promote faster growth than if we were to just leave the pastures alone. So our suggested science scale for practice of our QU 5.15 today is to make a claim that proposes a solution to an environmental problem. So I want you to take a look at this picture specifically and describe two soil conservation strategies that could be used to prevent erosion in agricultural fields that would be established in this landscape. 
All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future Apes video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.